is in the CFL right now. That pumps those guys up on the other side of the ball, and they'll get after you. Safety blitz was picked up, but Walker is in pursuit of Barrett. Barrett throws to the sidelines, and he was throwing that out of bounds. Pass Ottawa picked up the safety blitz, but that enabled Kenny Walker to come free, and Walker had Barrett running for his life to the sidelines. Kenny Walker does an excellent job of getting good heat up the middle, forcing Danny Barrett out of the pocket and having him running to his left. It's a very awkward throw for him. He just did not have anybody on the outside to make him get that containment to force Danny Barrett to have to pull up, and that would allow Kenny Walker to make the sack from the backside. Better yet, the ball was thrown incompleted, and it forces Terry Butker to have to punt. Baker has had five of his punts blocked this year. This one is a good kick taken by Wiggins down at the five-yard line. Wiggins loses the football, but Owens recovers for Calgary. A fortunate break for the Stampeders as Wiggins lost the ball, but Dondre Owens was there to scoop up the loose football. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your 1994 Outriders, sponsored by Tropicana Pure Premium Orange Juice. Get out a little quicker. That, that 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 the choreography by Allison Just Joseph. Trying. They stood up a little quicker, because then you're trying to rush it. coming back with these standings so I'll just say back in Calgary yeah. no yeah. score and we're doing both west and east okay okay Back in Calgary, no score of four minutes into the first quarter. A year ago, Stamps had first all but wrapped up. It's not a sure thing this year, but they'd look good if they could move three in front of BC and four up on Edmonton with a win today. In the East, even with its loss yesterday, Hamilton is still in playoff contention. Mind you, Don, if Ottawa pulls off the upset today, the Cats can forget about it, and therein lies Ottawa's motivation this afternoon. Yes, and what a demoralizing loss again yesterday for the Hamilton Ticats against the Edmonton Eskimos. The third week in a row that they have led the ball game and then lost. Tony Stewart, little swing pass out of the backfield. He loses Number the football, but Tony was already Stewart out of bounds. Patrick Burke came over to make the tackle. Doug Moody has the opportunity in the final five games of the season to establish a third season in the CFL is a 6,000 yard passer. He has to average about 380 yards per game over the final five games. Surprisingly, Dan, he's had only one game, and that was here against Winnipeg, where he First has passed his year for over 400 yards. 32. He certainly has, where all of a sudden uh, 300 and 400 yards of the, uh, passing has become the norm. Sean Daniels is tackled for a loss of about a yard by Derek McCready. Number 35, Sean Daniels. Pretty a man who sat out of football for, for a season before rejoining yard, Ottawa this Second year. Offensively, 11. Calgary lines up this way with Jamie Crisdale again in at center, replacing Doug Davies. Davies is still having a hand problem, but Davies will come in for the long snap. But Crisdale will play center, and that means that Rocco Romano is at guard and Bobby Pandelitis is on the other side at guard. Flutie operates out of the shotgun. Flutie dumps it off, intended for Will Moore, incomplete. And the Ottawa Rough Riders had a six defensive back package in there once again. They started out first, first and ten, they ran six defensive backs. And I tell you what, the one thing that I see right now, the first two plays from Doug Flutie, he just does not look as mobile as a normal Doug Flutie is. He's hobbling just a little bit. I anticipate to see him trying to get rid of the ball very quickly, not seeing much scrambling from him today. Tony Martino 
who suffered an ankle injury against the Las Vegas Posse here at McMahon Stadium, the same game in which Flutie was hurt. Gets an end over end kick away that is taken by Mazzoli, and Number there are three Nick Stampeders Mazzoli within the five yard five area. And this line. will almost certainly improve the Ottawa Rough Riders field position after only a 29 yard Great punt by Martino. Mazzoli doing an excellent job of coming up in a hurry, fielding the ball on the fly, catching Calgary in the no yards, and hopefully giving no Danny yards. Barrett. Calgary number six. It's a 15 yard penalty. It's first down. A little shorter feel to have to set up to try to get the ball into the end zone. The no yards penalty takes the ball to the Calgary 45 yard line. It's first and 10 at that point for Adam Rita's team. Adam Rita in his rookie season as head Ottawa coach of the Ottawa Rough Riders after working as an assistant on the Grey Cup champion Edmonton Eskimos last year. 9-12 remaining in the opening quarter. It's still scoreless here at McMahon Stadium. And there's a whistle and uh, a penalty flag again. One time count violation has already been charged against Danny Barrett this afternoon. I think they may call an illegal procedure quickly against Mike Graybill. He seems to get off the line. Illegal very procedure. 57. Ottawa first down repeated. Good call, Cap. It was Mike Graybill who moved prematurely. Right at the top of your screen, you can see Mike Graybill, the left tackle, trying to get out very quickly. And that's some of the things you may have to do against this Calgary defense. Jump on them as fast as you can and maybe not try to get caught. First and 15 now, the handoff to Richardson, and Richardson isn't going anywhere. Greg Finlay held his position on the corner. I said Greg Finlay, Matt Finlay, the uh, Calgary linebacker, and he has dual responsibilities uh, throughout the course of this game. He calls the defensive signals and also relays those defensive calls to Kenny Walker. Certainly does, and, and Kenny Walker does extremely well of being able to read the lips, and if for any reason he cannot pick the lip reading up, the hand signals go from Matt Finley. Fast, fast, fast. Danny Barrett is in some trouble, and he's forced out of bounds. He was being chased by the middle linebacker, Marvin Pope, and with help from Alandra, Alandra Johnson, Danny Barrett simply ran out of room. This is a solid, disciplined Calgary defense. They do their jobs, they do it extremely well, and they are full speed every time they pursue and they attack you. Excellent coverage in the back end that time as Danny Barrett came out, wanted to throw, no coverage. Marvin Pope and Alondra Johnson coming from their linebacking to force him out of bounds. Terry Baker stands at his own 50 for this third down punt. Trying to angle it towards the sidelines and Pee Wee Smith takes it on the dead run, but it looks as though Brian McCurdy may have been inside that five yard area because there was a penalty flag thrown almost immediately. 25 yards on the kick for Terry Baker. That's a good call, Wade. I think exactly that's going to be the case. As it went to the left, they kicked it out, and then they gets caught in the no yards penalty. Pee Wee Smith picks it up, but he does step out of bounds. We'll clear it when we come back. No yard, number 16. Ottawa. You're picking that up. First down count. Way to go, Cap. All right, time now for another San Peter's lucky section. This time sponsored by. Why did I call that Greg Finlay? <laughs> Because they got so many Gregs on that team. <laughs> Greg Fears, Greg Knox. Let's check the rows now as we open up the box. Thanks to Max Convenience Stores and don't forget to exchange the Coca-Cola tokens at Max After Scott, can you give me a shot of Doug Flutie? That's what we're doing, I think. Okay. Well, that's typical. Yeah. Uh, then I'm calling the rest of the quarter. Constant, Mr. Constant Interruption. Yeah, yeah. If he wants, tell him if he wants to do the play-by-play -play from the sidelines, he's welcome to it. I'm going to do it, I told you. Yeah, sure, sure. Actually, actually, uh, yeah, okay. Which ankle was it that he hurt? His left. 
Yeah. Husky and proud to support Sam Peter football in Calgary, and Husky Oil invites you to be a winner. Happy the Husky announces the top dog prize. If you're in section S, Back in Calgary, Doug Flutie on the field for his second series of this game. A whole lot's been made of the sprained ankle he suffered in mid-September against Las Vegas. He just told me it's far better than it was a few weeks ago in Sacramento when he couldn't sprint out at all. That certainly limited his, uh, his, his game. And uh, Donnie says he still isn't 100%, but even though uh, there aren't likely to be any 50-yard bob and weave runs, he's not a sitting duck, and he has got the ability to keep the play alive. Well, he is very mobile, even with that Number ankle, not at 100%. Tony Stewart, the ball carrier. Flutie was telling me that last week against Las Vegas, he ran four times for 40 yards, but he said on his last run, one of the Vegas players tackled him and twisted his ankle again in making the tackle. So uh, he said while he thought he would be back at 100% for this game, he's probably operating at about 70% efficiency. Second and five. Flutie scrimmaging from the 37-yard line, dropping back, looking downfield, won't get a chance to throw, but then escapes the pressure and trying to dump it off to Pee Wee Smith, overthrows the target. Pee Wee Smith, number 86, incomplete third down. Doug Flutie not being nearly as elusive as he'd like to be. You really have to grab on and just break down, make a tackle, grab some cloth, and hopefully that you can be able to get him down and hold on to him. That's John Crofty who comes in, and just all he has to do is wrap him up, hold on, and have the help come. Doug Flutie's able to spin away, get out, and at least dump the ball off, and he doesn't give up the, a loss. Puts a punting situation for Calgary. Martino's first kick, remember, was only a 29-yarder. because of the ankle problem suffered here at McMahon Stadium on September the 16th. He has really not been practicing his punting during the week. This is Brooks on the punt return for Calgary, and he brings it up across two, the 40 Horace, to the 41. The for the riders, so the so Ottawa yards, Rough Riders no, again have Martino pretty good punt. field position after a 45-yard punt by Martino and a 14-yard run back Sitton by Brooks. Smith Danny Barrett, I, I personally feel is going to need to come out and throw the ball the a little quicker, Martino. try to buy a little bit more time, nickel and dime it somewhat. If you're going to come out and just line up and say, I'm going to run this ball right down your throat, that Calgary defense is sitting in there waiting for the rush. He hasn't done anything to really help the rushing situation right now. Throw the ball a little bit, get them spread out, and see if you can have some success. Collins, the ball carrier, and Collins picks up about one yard. Calgary Stampeders have the best defensive record in the Canadian Football League. Coming into this game, they had given up just 263 points. This is a defensive team that will only allow you 20.2 points per game this season. Calgary's offense has been averaging almost Second double that, 40.2 games per season, per game. And Calgary has the potential to be the first team in the CFL to score 70 points this season. Jock Climey takes the throw and takes it out of bounds for a first down Ottawa. A 15-yard reception for Jock Climey. Jock Climey coming back after his injury early part of the season. He only has 24. This is his 25th catch of the season so far. A great addition and a solid receiver. He helps the whole receiving core along just because he demands so much respect out there from the secondary. Barrett rolls out to his left. Barrett finds Climey again. Another first down for Ottawa. Junior Thurman came up to make the tackle. 12-yard game, Junior Thurman with the tackle. Well, Danny Barrett and Jock Climey have certainly been operating on the same page this afternoon, and Jock Climey, in returning to the lineup, has now taken over the Ottawa team lead in receptions. Jock reads the zone. He sets down inside between the outside linebacker and the corner who's rolled up in a cut ball on the outside, finds the open spot. Danny Barrett gets the ball to him. Hand off to Jerry Collins. Good hole, and Collins... Takes it inside the 25-yard line. Greg Knox, the safety, came over to bring him down, but that was a gaping hole for Jerry Collins and the 15-yard run. Coach Adam Rita says our offense is built on lookalikes. We try to set up plays to make things look like other things, but as soon as the ball snaps, we're going to do something completely different. They come with a couple of rollouts, force the corner. Now they come back and hand the ball inside to Collins. Big success. Penalty flags as there was movement at the line of scrimmage. 
Bud Steen is the man heading the officiating crew this afternoon. And he'll give us the call. Offside, Calgary number 99, first down repeated. Kenny Walker jumped prior to the ball being snapped, so it's now first, first and five for Ottawa. And the ball is at the 19 of Calgary. Ottawa has dominated the first quarter of this football game, and Collins is looking for a first down and gets it, taking the ball to the 10-yard line. Stopped there by Alondra Johnson. Alondra Johnson, number 51. Collins came into this game averaging 4.8 yards per carry. Good, solid blocking off the left side behind Mike Bra Graybill, but then it's just the quick feet of Collins. He's able to set the block up, go outside, break back inside, and picks up good yardage. Collins again, and Collins is going to score. The Penn State product puts it in the end zone, and the Ottawa Rough Riders have a 6-0 lead. Ottawa has not won at McMahon Stadium since 1983. Doing something that they said that they were exactly going to try to do, and that is run the ball right at this Calgary defense. And that's some of the things when you're going to challenge another defense, you better be able to perform. And Jerry College and that offensive line are doing an excellent job. Danny Barrett being very methodical in his play selection. Well, the last time these two teams met in Ottawa, the Rough Riders gave the Stampeders all they could handle before bowing 30 to 27 on a late field goal by Mark McLaughlin. The point after gives Ottawa a 7 nothing lead. Congratulations to September 16th Spaniel player of the game, Stampede receiver Alan Pitt. Alan recorded 11 receptions for 196 yards and two touchdowns as the Stampeders pummeled the Las Vegas Posse. Daniel Kennedy is proud to sponsor present Allen with a cordless telephone as the Daniel player of the game. Time now for the AMJ Canada okay. move of the game. AMJ Canada's largest mover is proud to celebrate its 60th anniversary by sponsoring today's move of the game. Two people sitting high in section J will be moved out of the nose plate down into section H. Row one, seats 23 and 24. All thanks to the official carrier. How many times has Collins carried now? And on this on this uh, drive, how many times did he carry? Visit Sunbridge Mall, the dominant shopping center in Northeast Calgary, with over 165 stores and services for your shopping convenience. You're gonna like it, Sunbridge Mall. The staff leaders and Irene Bessie Keyboard present your chance to sing the national anthem for the final home game October 30th. See the Singers Connection booth, which is in the East Concourse, for more details. Take it easy. Take the Greyhound. Passenger fares and schedule information at 265-9111. Okay. Jerry Collins put it in the end zone. He was the key man in this 69-yard touchdown drive for Ottawa. He carried three times for 34 yards, and he capped it with a 10-yard run for the major score. So the Ottawa Rough Riders, who have to go back to October 8, 1983, to record their last win at McMahon Stadium, lead by a score of 7-0. Pee Wee Smith takes the ball at the 9-yard line on this Calgary kickoff return. And he runs into uh, traffic at the 30. 3.39 remaining Pee in the Wee opening Smith. quarter. Number and so far, Dan, surprisingly, it's been all Ottawa. Well, it really has. And I, I think a lot of cases that this Ottawa now, defense right here has done a solid job. Led right now, right now Greg Battle, the addition that he brings to an already solid linebacking core. This guy is a winner. He has been a great cup champion. He has been a two-time MVP in this league. He brings a real solid attitude to an already solid front seven. So hopefully if they can get all 12 guys running on the same page as that man right there, this is going to be a productive defense. Sideline pattern intended for Vince Danielson. It will be second and 10. Doug Footy, so far in this opening 10. quarter, has not looked at all sharp. 
coverage by number I 21, think, Gary and, and again, any time that you've got a problem with an ankle, you've got the weight distribution that's on it, Doug just does not look like he's comfortable sitting back there in the pocket. And when he starts to plant to set up and throw, he's throwing and he's trying to really alleviate some of the pressure that he puts on it, and it takes something off of that ball, and he's not being as accurate as what we have seen Doug Flutie be through the course of this season. One of four for 13 yards, movement at the line of scrimmage, and I think over on the left side, it may have been Alfred Smith who was jumping prematurely. <laughs> Offside, Ottawa number 48, five-yard penalty, second down repeated. Those eight to nines look just about the same. That's number 48, that's David Benefield. And this is a solid defensive player also. Coach Adam Rita has said and stated that the fact that if this five defensive yards, team and anybody on this team years. can play up to the standards that this guy brings to the game every day, winning will take care of itself. Flutie now out of the shotgun. Second and five, and Flutie may have to run it. And he goes down, sliding into the 42-yard line. And I think that is a pretty good indication that Flutie is having some problems with the ankle, Dan, because usually he would try and run. He wouldn't slide. And, and he would be very fleet of foot with it out there. This guy can run like a gazelle. He makes moves. He makes you miss him. And he did not look. He looked very tentative coming up to shoot that time. Obviously, and, I, and I'll step out on the limb to say that, that Doug Flutie and the Calgary Stampeders want to try to get this game out of hand as early as they can, pick up a big enough lead, and hopefully allow Steve Taylor to come in and be able to get some playing time and Doug Flutie some well-needed rest. Intended for Sean Daniels incomplete. It will be second and 10 with 157 remaining. Sean Daniels and the defensive back dressed today, Dondre Owens, are the only two players in the Calgary roster in this game who have not been with the team in some capacity since the start of the season. And that continuity is one of the reasons the Stampeders have been successful. This is incredible. They have 27 of the 36, 38 guys on that team that have never played for any other team. Second and 10 with 142 remaining in the opening quarter. 7-0 Ottawa leads. Flutie throws deep for Will Moore. He makes the catch on the sidelines and then is forced out of bounds. Ryan Randall gambled and lost as he came over to try and make the interception and Moore has a 36-yard game. Doug Flutie is just standing back in the pocket and I have to admit, he throws a duck up there. This ball is wobbling. It's hanging all up in the air. Brian Randall makes an excellent break on the ball, goes up to try to knock it down, and you got to know it. Once you make that solid effort to try to knock it down, you've got to be able to grab some cloth somewhere just in case the guy does make the reception so that he doesn't go in for the major. First and 10 from the 34. Daniels the ball carrier, and Daniels is caught from behind by David Field after a pickup of about six yards. Make it second and four with 102 remaining in the first quarter. Benefield and Smith are the outside linebackers. Battle and Bonner in the middle. Second down and four. Second and four, Calgary. Flutie throws to Allen Pitts, and Pitts has a first down at the 20-yard line. Brett Young was there to make the tackle. Allen Pitts with his 94th reception this season. Came into the game with these totals and projected could shatter his own record of 118 receptions in a season. He could wind up with 128 and 2,107 yards. Just an incredible record. Eight of the 13 games coming into this game here have been catches for over 100 yards. First and 10. Foody looks to the end zone for Stewart, and Stewart actually got a hand up to knock it away from a potential interception. Stewart goes from offensive running back to defensive back right there. The ball's under throw, great coverage, and Stewart makes an excellent defensive play to knock the ball away so it's not intercepted. So after 15 minutes of play at McMahon Stadium, it's 7-0 Ottawa. Yeah, 
He told me, uh, Smith, I, you pointed to. With 231 remaining in the second quarter with a 36 yard booming field goal. Please welcome former Stampeder J.P. Hayes to present. There's that the presentation. And for Sanu Canada, Jeff Sanders, who on behalf of Sanu will present a Sanu Fisher CD player for the Milestone Awards. Presenting the award for Jeff is marketing and vice president Ron. Hey, have you got the uh, have you got that font of uh, all-time leading scorers?